What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. So, you can see I'm just emptying out the pipe on the left-hand side. The right-hand side's fine. The left-hand side, uh, basically, I put a little bit too much water in. If you put too much water in, it will just stop. If it does that, don't worry. Just tell them to drain, say, five, six tiles. Usually works nicely. We'll see. Try it out. Basically, you want to just keep doing it until it starts going constantly round, like on the right-hand side. It should go up the insulated pipe to the top and then straight back down the center in the insulated pipe. Um, unless it needs to go through any of the obviously radiant pipes to cool down a room. But it shouldn't stop anyway. Now if it does stop, don't panic too much. Remember that the generators won't go below 10 degrees anyway, so it's not going to freeze the water. But I like to just see it running so I know that everything's running in pattern. Now we do have a block here. And I'm not sure why, because the rules of the piping is fine, to my knowledge. Uh, basically, though, it just needs a helping hand in telling it which way to go. So up to that ye uh, white entrance there for that bridge. It is going across. But then it stops. It doesn't know it can continue. So putting in another bridge should solve that, just to tell it. Or more importantly, force it to continue on. And that should be it. With a couple of extra bridges in there now, you can see it should continue to go up and past all of the white inserts for each of the floors. Effectively, what you want is for it to get all the way to the top, round and back down the center. As soon as you get a full circuit like that, you know you've done it right. A couple of rooms I've missed here for bridges as well. This isn't going to work if there's a cut pipe. That's for the kitchen. Stop the kitchen from overheating. I've just realised actually, and it's a bit silly, but I've still not got the uh, range cooker, the high-end gas cooker, and we've got plenty of gas, so I'll get that in very soon. Okay, so we're going over to the second asteroid now. Uh, we're going to do it properly though, so I'm going to wire in, uh, or plumb in, should I say, the teleporters. So both the send and return, obviously this is the liquid, so I'm going to plumb in the clean water into the sender and plumb in the polluted water from the receiver so that I can then set up proper bathrooms on the second asteroid and they'll work properly. Clean water will come in from this base, the dirty water will come back to this base and get cleaned etc. I'm also going to plumb in a gas line for oxygen to be transferred over to the asteroid so it never struggles for oxygen. And finally, the shipping line, the conveyor rail, make sure that is plumbed in to drop the goods off. So whatever we send over there, which is likely going to be food and maybe some refined metal. Yes. Um, also, I've just plumbed in the return gas line so any gas we send back from the other asteroid will come back here go into that pipe there on the right which is the sorting line and automatically get sorted into the canisters as we require there is some ethanol as well i could do with bringing over as the ethanol is like the best uh, coolant in the game unless you get into the super coolants but the, the, the ethanol is um you, you can get way into the negative 50 to 100 degrees and it still remains a liquid. Though, to be honest, other than saving water, uh, which I'm not sure we need to do, it's not really that relevant for this situation. So I can store it and use it elsewhere. It will probably be... Yeah, I think we'll probably need to use ethanol to try and go into the cryo fuels if we get that far. We shall see. In the meantime, just fixing a few floors, making sure floors that I left out have been plumbed into the cooling system as well. This one, because everything I'm sending over and back from the other asteroid and to the other asteroid, I want to try and steal any of that heat that we do get generating from that process. Okay, so to get the spores up and running again, uh, my idea is quite simple. So we've got a backup here of carbon dioxide. I'm going to get that carbon dioxide from that storage, pump it into the room for the spores, then it will go, sorry, it will obviously be in that room and get full of spores. They will then go through the machine. It then has a return line, and yes, this is a lot of piping for it, but 
I could move the building, but I'd rather leave it where it is for now. It then pipes back up here and back into the storage. Now, the only downside to this, or the only negative potential for this, is the germs, the zombie spores, are not fully cleared out. So, we will get them in that gas tank. Now, they won't leak into the other gases, of course, but basically, we'll have polluted zombie spore carbon dioxide. Now, I need to pay attention to that to make sure I don't use it in the future. I can quite easily clean it. Uh, either putting the tanks in a chlorine full room will do it. Uh, but easier than that, we have the germicidal lamps anyway that will do that job too. Now, again, we have some idiots that have got themselves stuck, so I'm going to have to fix this quite quickly. They are in Atmo suits, luckily. Um, but, yeah. I swear she did it on purpose. Just look how happy she is. Something very suspicious going on there. Just saying. Anyway. Um, all we need to do is make sure the materials that are nearby, which is granite, I believe, uh, and then automate it to do that. They'll pick that up and get that ladder built in ASAP as well. And the one above it looks like it's needed. It looks like all four of them are actually stuck somehow. I, I, I yeah, yeah, they are. Jesus. Okay. So do the same there, and that will allow them to at least escape and go and empty their Atmo suits for P and also recharge the oxygen in them. Should they wish to, of course. Finally got round to plumbing in. I'm not sure if plumbing in is the right word, but putting in the uh, transport tube on the right-hand side as well now. So we've got some... Well, we've got a good amount of transportation built in. This one just needs to be powered up, of course, to be fully functional. But it means they can get to where they're going much faster without having to be slowed down by the pole that they're currently using. Though the pole's reasonably quick, but not as quick as the transport pipe anyway. With some new eggs, we've got a cuddle pip. So we've got a new egg from the pip that is a cuddle pip. The pips are really for um, happiness for your duplicates and that sort of stuff uh, we could we could use it for that but i mean i'm more inclined to just ranch them as, as farming animals for now maybe we can turn them into a cuddly barbecue later on we'll see the hatch room as you can see now has calmed down a bit a lot of the smooth ones have gone as i did turn it off for that reason uh, the standard pip there below and then the cuddle pips like an orange color just checking what resources we do indeed have. Now, the stone hatches are fine to continue to make coal. The diamond hatches eat in refined carbon to make diamond. These eggs are going to get wiped out because, I, as I said, I'm not interested in moving forward on the smooth hatches. In fact, we'll get some more diamond eggs going as well. Still having a few issues with the steel production, not because of the setup. The setup is good. It's because I'm getting a bit. I keep getting greedy. What I'm trying to do is figure out at what point does it break, so that I know how much to put. I could put through it to get the maximum efficiency without it breaking. Now, of course, I could just add more of the cooling things, I guess, and I may do that. I'm not sure, but for now, what I need to do is get the coolant back in it, being water. Um, and then we can, of course, continue. Now, actually, I could switch the water out and use oil. Because oil getting too hot will not cause issues. But I think it will still get up. The, the temperature will still rise and rise and rise to the point where it will then turn into petroleum and break it anyway. So I think what I'll do is put a temperature sensor here for the pipe and set that that if the liquid's coming into the machine too hot, it stops it. That way it can't break, right? It, it shouldn't be able to anyway. Because we know that it comes out at about 70 degrees hotter, so as long as it doesn't come out, it needs to go in at 20-ish degrees or below to come out at less than 100. So if we set that in-pipe thermometer 
to a temperature that makes it safe, then it can't ever get too hot. And the machine basically then is controlled automatically. If then it slows down the production of steel too much, we can either add a, make another one and slow them down so there's two running instead, or just increase the coolant room with the generators. As you see, we've got, I think, 15 at the minute. Maybe I can overkill it to 30. Then it should never be an issue. Desperate, but effective. I'm going to chuck down a load of the thermo generators in this area. Where I showed you previously, this is that, where that heat got out. And it's just one big massive red area. So I thought, why not just chuck a crap ton of these down? I'm pretty sure I won't need to build them all. You can see that bottom layer is already doing its thing. But as soon as I see that most of that red is gone, I'll just rip this all down and get the resources back. Um, I think that as long as we get sort of three or four on each of them four levels that I've put in, we should be good. But the idea is that I can kind of just forget about that a little bit and come back to it maybe in a few cycles and see what the temperature's looking like. I would imagine that a lot of that red will have dissipated and effectively all it's going to do is turn it into power and put it in our batteries or in the use of machines that are running elsewhere and yeah you can see that's clearly eating away at that heat quite efficiently anyway so again i don't think i need to finish them all and maybe a few temp shift plates i'm going to put them on that right hand side to try and get over to where that cable is so i don't have to build too many over there that should pull that heat over to the left and then get uh, eaten by the generators again it's easier to build the temp shift plates than it is the whole setup for the pumps so over at the second asteroid nobody's here yet but before we do that i just need to plumb in or build in well i can't build anything because they're not here but i can set up what they need to build when they get here so ripping out the old bathroom is step one Ripping out any of the buildings or machines that they can't or don't need is step two. And then putting in the buildings that they will be using. So, of course, they're going to need a lavatory, toilet, a sink, a shower. That should give them a bathroom. They need bedrooms. Um, this is the first person going over. I don't know why they're invisible in the teleporter. It's annoying. But straight over, and you can see immediately cleaning up the crap that we asked them to, so that's good. Now, the idea of the people that are going to be on this asteroid is reasonably simple. So they are going to set up a base that's comfortable for them. So bathroom, bedrooms, oxygen, etc. Which you can see all that stuff, resource is already on its way. When that's done, they're then going to be given a task to do a crap ton of digging and to send resources over to the home base that is required. Uh, resources like the cobalt, for sure, the cobalt ore, because we need a lot of ore at the home base. Um, any of the polluted dirts, muds, etc., they need to go back to be processed with the animals. Specifically, I think it's the, what they're called, poach shells, that require polluted mud in order to feed and then obviously continue to breed continue to shed and continue to give us lime though I do think that fossil is the next way to go because it's just an abundant resource that I'm not actually using for anything else um, unless anybody knows of a, a good reason to use it it's a, not a bad resource to use for Decoration, I think, but that's all I can think of. So you can see the, the the water, the clean water is going to come from that teleporter there, go into the toilet and the sink and the shower. The polluted water will then get sent back home and processed. So this asteroid is not having to do any of the work. It's just benefiting from the resources from the other asteroid. Same goes with the oxygen. You can see outside of the base, especially below it, that really bright green. That is a very high concentration of oxygen and of polluted oxygen. So cleaning that and getting it sent home is also a option. But the first thing I really want them to do is get this built up. It's going to take this duplicate a little bit of time. As soon as I can send over a second, I will. I think two's enough to do what I need them to do. 
after the two are delivered, I think the next duplicate that will arrive at this asteroid will be on rocket. Hopefully with some storage facilities uh, to take goods away in bulk, um, but also to take some critters away as well, like the plug slugs, as they are called. And here we go. With the other end already plumbed in and everything working, immediately we get the clean water coming in, and now we have a fully functional sink, toilet, and shower for this duplicate every day, so they can be nice and clean and comfortable. We do need to obviously get the polluted oxygen out of their living environment, which the oxygen being pumped into them vents will push it out, because clean oxygen is lighter i'm not sure if it's lighter or if it's just how the game does it but clean oxygen always goes above the polluted oxygen anyway and then a basic setup there for a pump to get the gases sent home now we don't have power yet so don't get excited about these things actually working just yet because we will need to power them up for them to work and to do so i'm just going to trap say three or four of the plug slugs there's four there a lot on that left hand side so all i need to do is dig out that area Make the ceiling flat, put a cable in, two tiles down, and boom, we've got power. There we go. That power cable was wrong level. It needs to be one down from the ceiling, not not at the ceiling. It needs to be the second tile down. Um, I also went along and put some of the air filters along the base. You can see there. Again, not powered because I haven't quite got there yet. Um, but that will just make sure that any polluted oxygen that's in base gets cleaned. And it just keeps the duplicant or duplicants happy. I am going to use a transformer because I can't have the heavy watt wire going straight through the base for two reasons. One is that I want the rooms to give them the morale boost. But two is it's ugly as shite and causes massive decor debuffs. Um, because it's negative 300 on the decor uh, numbers. So you don't want to do that. So always suggest to try and not chuck that through the base where you can, of course, help it. If it's life and death, then fine. But in this situation, we've got more than we need. It's a shame we can't actually power in the wire from the other base as well. Now, there, are, there is a mod that can do the wireless power. Um, but as I didn't start with that, I really don't want to add it now. So we're going to manage with asteroids are going to have to find their own power. And we'll probably have to use like solar panels in the future. Still a lot happening, and poor Ban He is very, very busy. Um, you can see there is actually a full canister, a conveyor belt loader of goodies, mud and polluted mud. Of course, it won't send it home until there is power getting to that conveyor belt loader. Um, over in the... What do you call it? I, I'm going to call it a ranch. It's not really a ranch. I have moved the, the cable down. I've told them to. Not quite got there yet. So Banhee is very, very busy trying to build everything I'm telling him to, or her, I think it's a her actually, my bad, anyway, um, and th there is a lot to do, at some point I'm after just going to cut ties and leave them alone for a little bit and allow them to catch up I suppose is the best way of putting it, now I've realised as well, although we've got the power cable into the filters, we don't have any sand on this asteroid, so that's something that I need to send over from the other side. Which is fine, we've got plenty of that. As you can see, what I'm actually doing here is cancelling a lot of the stuff and allowing them to catch up with the actual tasks that I need. The most important one is that cable there, so that as soon as we go to bed, we will be generating some power from the plug slugs. Now, filtration sand, yes, so we can chuck that and go boom. And that will get all of our guys that need to turn and allow manual use on, though. Otherwise, that's not going to do anything. Just having a quick look at what food I can send over. Currently at 5 million calories. We'll send them over the frost buns to give them the maximum amount of mood buff. Clicking and allow use, you can see it's now lagging out because every single person is trying to grab as much sand and frost buns as possible and send them over to the other asteroid. It will eventually calm down when we either run out or it fills up. Should be more than enough. Then all I have to do is turn off the allow manual use and it will stop them from adding any more things in there. I think he's just being nosy and having a look there, you can see. This means that Banhee on the second asteroid has got 
a very high level of quality food. Pretty sure there's a fridge over here already. Yes, there is. So there is a fridge already, and the filtration media now means that they are... There you go, they're kicking in and cleaning that polluted oxygen. So that means good food for Ben He, good bathroom, good bedroom, uh, clean, fresh oxygen and plenty of it, power for the various things that she's going to need to do. So for now, she can just settle down a little bit, making sure anything that's edible is in that fridge. A freezer would have been a better option, but of course you need more fancy materials for a freezer. Uh, and it was just a bit too micromanaging to send them over for now. So at, at this stage, we're just going to manage with what we've got. It's hard to say exactly what we're going to harvest from this asteroid. Likely all of it. I don't... This asteroid being the teleport asteroid, I'm not going to use this as a second home, per se. So, best case, this asteroid is going to get ripped out and every single possible item and resource is going to be sent home. So this is just an empty space and then we'll fly home and just leave it as an empty asteroid. If we're going to set up a second base where I want a second colony to grow, if the series lasts that long with your support, uh, we will do that on a planet that is, or sorry, an asteroid that is reached via rocket only. There is still quite clearly a lot of work for Ben He to do to get the power down here so we can get the goods finally sent home and then that means that we're also able to send cobalt home along with the gases and any liquids we need to send home as well. Um, the polluted water specifically. We don't want that to back up because then the plumbing and the sink etc will stop working. We are at time now though, so we'll have to wait for this to be finished on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome as always. Subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.